We had a customer in the studio the other day. He's ordered his Forge, and um, but he wanted to try it out, you know, before he took delivery. And we were talking about it. He asked, you know, what about temperature and what about duration? And one of the things he said was that he'd read seven or eight minutes in freezing cold water is enough to kill you. And it reminded me of Kelly McGonigal, uh, her book, Upside of Stress, which I cite all the time, that claimed freezing water like this, I'm at 34 degrees, would kill me in two minutes. Well, you know that's not true. We've had Joe Rogan, he's done 20 minutes. I did 22 minutes with Dr. Call. And heck, there's a, there's a girl I know, she's 12 years old, she did 30 minutes. It's not gonna kill you. But I get a lot of questions about whether ice baths are safe and what are the dangers. So I wrote an article about it. And I'm gonna summarize it for you here. There are three. The first most important thing, it's drowning. Drowning is when you inhale water into your lungs and you suffocate because your lungs are no longer getting any air. And drowning is a serious risk in any tub. So what do we do about the risk of drowning first? You forge sober. And that way, you know, accidents are less likely to happen. And two, supervise children. Like, it's okay for children to do their cold exposure. They get more brown fat than the adults do generally. But would you keep an eye on them when they're in there? Supervise them. Now that's sort of a normal bathtub risks of drowning, but there's another one. When you get into the cold, you will experience something called the gas reflex. <gasps> it's very natural to breathe in. And so the third, the most important, I think, safety tip on drowning is always forge feet first. So forge sober, supervise children, and forge feet first. So that when you experience that gasp reflex, you're sure that your nostrils and your mouth are up out of the water, in the air, <gasps> until you can get better control of your breath. So that's drowning. People ask about hypothermia, and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of myths about hypothermia. What, hypothermia is not just being cold. Hypothermia is when your core body temperature drops by more than two and a half degrees Celsius. So this is not just cold fingers or, you know, cold toes. This is a core body temperature. And it's, it can be dangerous, but it's not as dangerous as people think. Your body does better in the cold than it does in the heat. And so how long does it take in a forge like this, 34 degrees, ice floating around, how long does it take for hypothermia to set in? More than 30 minutes. Even the, the girl I was telling you about, the 12-year-old girl, 30 minutes. I didn't measure her core body temperature, but of course, she was shivering and she needed rewarming. But it wasn't hypothermia. So how do we deal with hypothermia? The world record for submerging in, or submerging in ice is over two hours. That's probably going to put you in hypothermia. But 30 minutes won't do it at all. Your skin will get cold. But your core body temperature will be fine. The key is not the core body temperature when you're in the forge, but what happens to you when you get out. The most dangerous thing Joe Rogan did after his 20-minute ice bath was drive to work. What you need to do is rewarm. Uh, what did we do with the 12-year-old girl who did 30 minutes? Put her in the car in Phoenix, Arizona with the sun and the heat blasting. I call it a car sauna. Just drive around in the sunshine in Phoenix, Arizona, and your body will rewarm. But what I like to do is get some exercise, get my steel mace out, do some lunges, get kettlebells. I have all this energy, and the exercise in my extremities helps restore my circulation. So hypothermia isn't the concern, but rewarming is because your brain will be a little bit adult-minded. Your coordination and your dexterity, it won't be there. And you need to give yourself some time after a good forge to rewarm before you do anything like drive or operate heavy machinery or anything that could be dangerous. The third one. And this is the one you're gonna read on Wikipedia. You might see it in some of the science articles. You might hear it for some doctors. Some kind of cardiac arrest, a heart irregularity. 
And I've never seen a documented case of either drowning or hypothermia or a cardiac event as a result of an ice bath. I, I just haven't seen it, but I'm not saying it can't happen because there's a pretty good article from a scientist I respect, Tipton, who talks about there's the gasp reflex that I mentioned earlier. There's also the dive reflex. The dive reflex is a mammalian response. When you go under the water, your heart rate slows down. Your pulse slows, your metabolism slows because your body understands it's important to conserve oxygen. So everything slows down and that's the dive reflex. But the gasp reflex is speeding everything up, at least at that moment where you begin to get cold. So if the dive reflex slow it down and the gasp reflex speed it up are in conflict, the scientist Tipton, he coined a phrase called autonomic conflict, two conflicting autonomic responses that could create a heart irregularity. So now we're talking about a cardiac event when you're in the forge and what do we do about this sort of autonomic conflict? Breathe. Those are our safety tips. Forge sober. Supervise children. Go feet first. Rewarm, recover, and breathe. You're going to have a great forge.